Okay, hello, and welcome to the SAP Manager Community Development Meeting. It's uh, Wednesday, the 29th of June. And as always, uh, this meeting abides by the CNCF Code of Conduct. Um, there's only attendees from JetStack at this meeting, so we don't need to do any introductions. Um, we have a couple of agenda items. Um, the first one is to discuss and create a plan to update and clean up the set manager roadmap. And there's a PR for this. So I guess I'll pass over to Eva to talk about it. Cool. Um, yeah, we recently had someone who was interested uh, to see our open source roadmap. Um, we added a roadmap to Cert Manager repo, I think like about a year ago or so. And it had like kind of very high level high level themes, um, like things that we are interested in working on. Um, and actually in practice, we haven't really been using this roadmap, the one that we had. Um, so I was kind of wondering how, uh, so I made like a PR with sort of like a update for the roadmap, just like, I think I linked in the document. Um, do we want to like share the screen maybe and like kind of look at look at it perhaps or should i share it uh, yeah go for it <laughs> if you have if you if you can or i can share it if you can't i don't know if i can i'll give it a go um can you see my screen yeah, yeah can you see point. can you see like the github thingy yeah yep Cool. Probably should just zoom in by like 200%. <laughs> I will do that in a second. I mean, I literally just added a couple small items and I guess I was hoping that maybe this would be like a kickstart for um, a discussion on how do we decide what to put there and like whether we want, how do we actually want to use this and like kind of make it useful. I don't know, I guess. There are no community members at the moment in the, in the meeting, but maybe it would be interesting to hear um, what other people expect from this. Like, do they want to know what we will be working on like within the next, I don't know, like four months or within the next year, or do they want to know that like specific, I don't know, there are specific things that we are interested in or, um, yeah. I literally just added like a couple of things that we have been talking about, like the testing for improvements and things like, I don't know, like some security improvements, like automation of release process. And um, because like this morning, Richard in the stand up uh, linked the GitHub roadmap that had, that actually had, that was separated like in, in, in quarters. So I thought maybe like, you know, maybe we also want to do it this way. Cause I feel like, if it's just like a non-time box sort of like a document of high level themes, it's likely the case that no one will actually like look at it, which has been the case so far. So yeah, I don't know. I'm just interested what people think about whether we should time box it. Um, are these items too small? Are they like too, I mean, these are obviously all mostly like kind of maybe fall into tech debt rather than new features. And there isn't anything that would not be for search manager itself. Like, I guess that there, there's obviously missing like items um, in relation to other projects that we also have. But yeah, I'm curious what other people think about this. I think it's having the time box. I can see the benefit because it, it's sort of like a soft commit from who's, whoever is, like, has the intention to work on something to give an idea also for like visibility of the other users or people who are waiting for something. So I'm definitely for time boxing it with the reservation that it's a soft commit and would probably like add it to the release process, like after release, the next dev meeting, we would go through the roadmap, carry over stuff that needs to be carried over into the next uh, calendar section, or removing the stuff that we feel is actually no longer 
something that should be in the roadmap. That, that's that's what I think. So you actually think it could be like time box could be like the release period? Yeah, I think so. It's yeah, it's hard to balance as I mean we're working for Jet Stack at the same time and with commitments, but I think I think it's good practice as well. If you start time boxing it, we can learn more and more like about how much appetite we have and availability and stuff. So what's our release period right now? Was it two months again or like three months? Uh, still two months. So that would actually be quite like short term planning because for example, like right now there's there's the items that are there at the moment. Um we would not be able to do release automation and like all these testing for improvements and this one as well within one release period. Um so it would maybe like I'm wondering if there's a need to for like yeah, this is again, I, I guess, depends on who wants to look at this and what do they want to get from it. Maybe like we want to give an overview of like a longer time period of like kind of more of future priorities, not just like within the next two months. But maybe, yeah, as you said, perhaps starting with just two months is good. Yeah, I think we could scope stuff down and, and make them small and probably if we find a clever way to use labels and stuff, we might be able to keep track of, of smaller smaller items that are actually part of something larger and then that could be could span multiple releases maybe. I'm saying don't don't yeah, because we have the milestones for our releases. So I think in this PR there is a uh, link to GitHub's public roadmap, which is all kind of organized by columns. And so you can have like current Current re like current release master and as the like leftmost column, and then you can have long long term goals in the uh, further along columns. And I don't think yeah, because I, I think having like having long term goals in the roadmap is useful, but like, we haven't historically really be looked 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 at the roadmap very much, like the open source roadmap. I mean, um, it's a good point. I like that. Yeah, so I guess the question again is what do people actually want from it? I mean, do we need a roadmap? Like, what would it give it to us um, as opposed to the milestone? I mean, I guess it could have the higher level themes, but then. Well, the reason yeah. we have the roadmap is for when we applied to the CNCF, they like to see a roadmap. So that's why we have it. <laughs> it's pragmatic. <laughs> Yeah, but I was going to say that also that we, we need to create one or make sure we have one for the incubation. Um, question is if the the read or the markdown file would be enough or we actually want to use the board uh, for the, at least for getting incubated. My instinct is like to make it as easy as it possibly can be for people to change it like if 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 changing the roadmap requires a pull request that gets in the way like a little bit right because you need to get someone else to review it before you can changes can go through like if like it's just a sort of administrative task we don't need peer review for it and that like pull requests introduce that overhead so i think i, I lean towards wanting it in a project board the way maintainers can just make changes and like trust trust that we're not just going to do something evil or add in a pet project or something so do it like the yeah have the github project board with automatically just populated from labels on our issues which we already have for milestones right i'm sure we could have all the milestones like lined up we could have all the milestones lined up on the board if they're every two months and then just move issues across if they don't make it which... yeah and in in addition to that i do like the idea of having like big overarching goals in the roadmap file that we currently have and sort of having that having it be an action point for us in at the end of a bi-weekly meeting to go back and just have a look over those and say let's see if any of them have been worked on like do a status update something that um 
in six doors weekly meetings they have like a project round table where they go through each of the main projects and someone from a maintainer from each project will say something about what happened in that project the last week and that worked quite well for sort of a general status update and it could a similar thing could work for us here it's like um you know if if richard has been working on automating a the releases he can give a quick update on that because that would be a major theme for us for example so should we maybe have like labels should we could create custom labels i guess for issues for those uh, major themes um so like issues could be marked with i don't know release automation label for example and then perhaps could fall under so you yeah i guess that way it would just be easier to search for things in the board as well yeah. or we can somehow like even aggregate them together yeah so uh, that way and have, have part of the action in a bi-weekly be meeting be to review those labels on related issues and prs because otherwise people forget to set them and all kinds of things like that and they just sort of get forgotten about yeah it's a good point i i or we could just do like triage party more often maybe like every yeah yeah two weeks a, or something like that it's a fair point yeah i like that using the labels and then some sort of yeah because that enables more automation as well I, I really like that okay so there's some consensus although maybe we still need to ask community what they want out of a roadmap yes i think so but i think we i think we have a good starting point um we can kind of how we want to organize around it and then what goes into and and how we yeah make it clear for users i think that can be added on top after maybe so i guess the things we would need to do would be to kind of agree on the initial themes um that we already know that we want to work on and like create some labels for those and maybe have like a triage party where we see which issues already fall under that do we think like does that make sense or should they still would that be like a good starting point yeah and then the outcome of that if we do that in one sitting we could have the goal of the outcome being that we have the board in an initial state which is like oh this is a good beginning for a roadmap which would also be like CNCF is going to be like thumbs up on that. So the action item, so I guess there could be like an action item for this, which would be just just to set up a meeting where we do this, like another one, something like that. Yeah, should we do next Wednesday? Maybe we'll do, if we need to do it recurrently, recurringly, we could do it between the dev meetings, for example. But maybe maybe in a week. What do you think? Yeah. What's the when is the when is the release? When is oh, right. when is the sixth of July? It releases in a week, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's it's on the sixth. Yeah. True. Well, a good time would be just after release because it just gives direction to the next release. So end of the week, maybe like Thursday or Friday yeah friday after office hours is probably a bad idea but <laughs> the thursday or the monday either work for me maybe we give that action item to joachim find a time for it oh no <laughs> don't give to me i'm like adding joachim to here <laughs> if you have a uh... If you have time after all of the uh, current work that you're up to, <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's it's supposed to be done on Friday, so I should have time. Cool. So, what do we do? Is the should we remove the existing roadmap file from the repo just so it's not? Um, or I guess I uh, will close this PR because we'll definitely not do this in a file. Um, Maybe we can remove it once we actually have the board. Yeah, I think so. Or at least change it so it says the 
short term roadmap is on this board, the long term themes we look at, then just an abstract list of themes that we're interested in. It's a good idea. Okay. I will change my PR to just like, I will actually, I will do it like after we actually have the board. But yeah, I'll add this. Cool. It's a small meeting means that we can decide things and then it's, if someone doesn't like it, they should have been here. <laughs> I like this. Democracy. <laughs> Democracy works well for small communities. Okay. Hey, anything else to say on this then? Or uh, should I um, move on to the next agenda item? Just like user, yeah. Um, again, like call out to those people who were interested in um, finding out about roadmap. It would be good to know uh what you are expecting from this uh as in terms of like yeah just what what would you like to see there like high level themes or like particular whether a particular piece of work will be worked on or something else um like comments on on that open pr would be welcome or even just like in in slack cool All right, then I shall move on to the next gender item, which is from Ashley. Well, I think it's from Ashley. It's not labeled. <laughs> um, CA rotation. <laughs> CA rotation. Is it possible to come up with any recommended ways how to do it now? And what can we do to make it easier in the future? And this has come from a linked Slack thread in Set Manager Dev. Oh. So you'll have to look at the meeting notes to find that. Yeah. So, uh, I I asked Emma to re-add this um, after she'd removed it from the agenda, just because I think it's worth explaining a little more what I'm thinking when I'm talking in that thread and the, th the reason that I say the things that I do there. And it's a pain to say this in Slack and, and what have you. Um, so the idea... the sort of a proposal um, that went past here was to the idea of adding a CA certificate into the status field of an issuer. So an issuer will report its own CA for consumption by other things. Um, I, I think that's a dangerous path to go down. Like the, the thing that kills PKI deployed at scale is shadow IT and like people thinking they have done it right when they haven't done it right and then they don't realize until the thing expires two years, ten years later and it blows everything up. Um, if you're getting the CA certificate for your issuer from the issuer itself, then when that issuer rotates its CA, you'll automatically pick that up in whatever you're consuming it from. So if you've got a pod that's consuming your CA from an issuer, you'll get the change automatically from that issuer. The problem with that is if that if you're using that trust that certificate in your trust store and other things are connecting to you using that certificate, and that's the only reason you trust that certificate, you will lose, you'll stop trusting all those other things. You'll automatically stop trusting anything which hasn't updated its certificate yet. So you can't you can't roll over the certificate when it happens safely because you only get the one certificate from the issuer at a time, either it's old one or it's new one, like depending on whether it's rolled over, and you don't get both. And to do a CA rotation, like of a root CA safely, you need to have both. You need to have a period where you have both. Um, that doesn't apply in an emergency. Like if your root CA is exposed, you have to just yank it out everywhere and only trust the new one. There's no way around that. Like you, that's just a disaster scenario and you're going to have downtime. But you can rotate a root without downtime. It just necessitates that you have both routes trusted for some period of time in the middle while everything rotates to use the new root because not everything will, will change the chain it's using at the same time. So you kind of saw that with Let's Encrypt when they changed their issuance chain. Like there was a long while where they sort of dual ran with both and you could actually, they even let you pick which one you wanted for a while. Um, so, so the idea of having a status on an issuer scares me because it's not the safe thing to consume. Like you can make it easy for clients to trust that issuer 
by just getting the cert from that issuer, but I'm ex explicitly saying that you shouldn't make it easy. Like, and that's what I was trying to get across in this thread is it shouldn't be an easy thing to do because root, rotating a route safely is a fraught process. And the easier you make it to trust that route from the issuer, the harder you make it to rotate it safely down the road. Um, do, do, does what I just said make sense at all? Like, did, did, is, is that, did I ramble? Was I unclear? so but okay so what you are saying is that you may end up in a state where you have changed the ca on the issuer but you actually don't know if the consumers at this point are ready to take that ca or not because they may need the other one yeah exactly um, but if there was some okay so it, it, you can imagine a smart issuer here that will like allow you to do like if we had like the smart ca issuer say the different a new type of issuer insert manager that will allow rotation by serving its own it, both its old and new keys at once and then sort of do, do the rotation in an intelligent way behind the scenes that would make that would be safe enough but it's hard to define when it's ready to make the switch over kind of thing like how do you know when everything is now only using the new chain and you can retire the old route like that's, that's a surprisingly hard thing to do and actually like automation is a bit of a false friend here because you end up like it's hard to automate all of this stuff and know when to make the changeover like on, in a fundamental way because um the issuer won't know whether the client all of the clients have updated their trust stores um so the easiest way to not automate yourself into a downtime is to make the trust store be a separate thing entirely with some separate element of configuration in the way that it's built. Like you need to create the trust store in some manual process, or you can automate pulling all the things together into one trust store, but that trust store shouldn't be automatically configured from issuers themselves. But like if that trust store was, for example, like another resource that issuer refers to that might include both chain, two ch more than one chain, would that just be too much complexity for the consumers to like figure out which one they want? I I think at that point, if if you've got if you've got something which you're using to configure the issuer, I would say you probably want the client to be trusting the something rather than the issuer, because then clearly the, the something has something useful in it for the issuer to be using it in the first place, if that makes sense. I so, say so, like a way of making this work is that you could have like an additional additional CAs field on an issuer and it will report its own cert and these additional CAs. And that's that can kind of conceivably work but then why not just trust the additional CAs bit in your pod why why go through the issue in the first place yeah I was I was just reading the thread and I don't understand why we wouldn't well I, we should just put more effort into a trust project and start writing documentation to show people how how to dispute trust and with the intention that they would replace all the trust doors in their container I, I don't <laughs> i don't know because all of the suggestions in the thread about like having the issuer be smart and have both in both while it's rotating or reference a secret or something it all just sounds like we're better off in the trust project i agree and and I think most of like most of the ways that you could implement this such that a client can get its part of its trust store from an issuer, like as, as proposed here, most of those ways will end end in downtime in some capacity. Like it is exceedingly hard to do this if if it's automated in any way um, like that. Like whereas the trust project feels like the right level of abstraction for automation, like it feels like the right thing to do. But so in this case, would you expect that the CA cert um, would come 
Uh, so like, okay, so the trust project. So like, would you expect that the users will have created their own secret with the new CA or would you, I mean, assume, okay, assuming that you, I don't know, it's like a CA, search manager CA, sure. And or like, what would be a good example? Maybe, uh, maybe the CA issue, uh, well, it references a secret, right? I was just wondering if maybe the CA issue should be immutable and, because fundamentally, you're when you have a new issuer, if it's a new private key, why why should it just, why should you be able to change the private key of an issuer? You could just stop using that issuer, or maybe I've gone off the deep end. <laughs> maybe there's a case to be made for that as well. Like certainly, if if I'm configuring a pod to consume to get a certificate from a CA issuer. I can't really safely move between two different CA issuers unless I have external knowledge about the route that's behind them. If they're two different intermediates off the same route, I can safely switch between them. If they're two different routes, I can't switch between them safely without knowing that like the things that I talk to now also trust the new cert, for example. So basically you need some kind of external coordinator. You can't just like yeah, but uh, so what do you, uh, yeah, what do you do like in kind of MTLS case so, where like everything needs a CI cert? So this is this is where trust would help a lot because um, that makes it easy to within a single cluster that this by, by trust I mean the cert manager trust project that makes it easy within a single cluster to ensure that a trust store update has been propagated to every pod. So that that removes the sort of mechanical issue of getting that thing out there for things to consume, for pods to consume. Um, but the actual like configuring of the trust store is usually going to be manual if you're rotating a route. If you're not rotating a route, then it's kind of it should be trivial because if people trust the route correctly, then an intermediate rotation will be fine. But rotating a route does necessitate some or should necessitate some manual intervention to avoid downtime. I mean, you don't actually know exactly when everything is using the new CSR thread. You um, can't. No, not really. So no. the only thing the trust project could do is send a signal when it updates the trust store, but you'd still have to subscribe to that. Like, like most most apps, do not reload their trust store after start. It's mm. really annoying. <laughs> so even if we up, even if we use trust to update the like physical, if it's a, like key store or just a PEM text file trust store on every pod, most things will still not notice. And you have to then you'd have to then do a like rolling restart of your of everything. Yeah. So it is very painful to automate these things without knowing like how everything in your stack behaves. And and yeah it, as a sort of wider like th this is one of those you could get the mega books for providing this in a consulting capacity. Here it is going on YouTube for free. But to design to design a system like this at scale, um, where you update your trust stores, you're limited by how much time it takes to re-roll every deployment everywhere, and that can be like a month. <laughs> like, but but you like there's a case to be made for redeploying everything regularly. Anyway. And knowing how long, how frequently you do that dictates how long you need to be, you sort of need to dual run both CAs to be able to update everything safely. Like it, that it, it takes a huge amount of organizational planning ahead of time to do that. There's no other real safe way of doing it. Like you can't, like things like Nginx, you can tell them to re hot reload and pick up changes, but like it, nobody does ever. It's just they reroll the pods or the VMs or whatever. I say nobody does. I'm sure people do. I mean, that's probably too. That's probably too broad to say. But like, it, it's it's not worth it because something else on the system could pick could not be restarted, and then you're back at square one. Okay. A so, yeah. Just the the question and the agenda item. Then what should we what should we say or do? I think it feels like it feels like we need to write some of this down, like what we've just said, 
to explain to people who ask this question because I think maybe quite a few people who ask this question don't actually appreciate that it's very that's a very complicated question. I have perennially been meaning to write like a blog post or something that will explain how to safely do rotation like this. To do that trivial piece of work to write. I th I I'd like to think that the text that I wrote on the thread, the link Slack thread in the meeting notes, is kind of explains this in a way, and I hope that what I've just said here kind of explains it as well. As well, but I I I guess my yeah, like in the future, I'd I'd much prefer to have like a how do I rotate my CA issuer safely thing, and have that be a tutorial that we have or something. It would actually be awesome to run through the steps um, for an example rotation. I don't know. Either. I guess like it would still be easier on like a mesh where you have like this, the CSRs are for like the proxies rather than like some kind of custom app that does it in whatever way. Unless you're using the mesh. Yeah. <laughs> well, the reason the mesh works is because of the hot reloading thing. You send, you send all of the envoys an API call to say, this is your new trust bundle. And that's how you know that everything's doing it. You don't need to worry about the app. Yeah, but, but Istio didn't do this right. Yeah, <laughs> right. I round either. Like, it's, Envoy has the capability of doing it correctly. <laughs> but uh, I've yeah, I've done production Istio rotations. <laughs> didn't work very. It didn't work with zero downtime. It was very short, but I, I, if it wasn't zero. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's fair to say. I, I I would yeah, I'd like to write this this thing down and try it and actually do it because uh, generally as well, I think CA issues were a bit of a ticking time bomb when they're used because they just if the intermediate that you're using on a CA issue expires, you're just done. Like there's not doesn't there's not really any <laughs> warning it's going to happen. It just will blow up in your face and it should be just for. We should put a note on it, maybe saying that we, this is really a dev environment only issue, unless you really know what you're doing. I, I, would, I would absolutely, I think it wouldn't take much work to get CA issuers into a place where we could, people could like make an ad hoc MTLS cert manager mesh, like using CA issuers. And actually, it would not that be that hard to do that. And it's sort of like a really light touch, like. You've not got any complicated TLS interception. It's just like it'll do the certs and nothing else. I don't think it would be hard to get to, but we're definitely, definitely not there. I but do that in my. Uh, my uh, if you look at Cube Crash YouTube, I did that for uh, my presentation. There we go. So it is. It is pretty. Yeah, it's pretty easy if you know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> that old chestnut. Yeah. Uh. OK, so basically, we need to write this down and explain why. And we also need to just add, make more. I mean, this is going to be easier now, because we've been doing our docs rehaul over the last few weeks. And now there's lots of sections on the set manager site for different projects. We could better document trust. And it needs some more features. But before people can use it to completely replace the trust store and the containers, it needs to have like the common CADV as an option. And yeah. we can add some more federation options. Like why why not have that one of the sources be CA issuer or CA dot cert that the key that we've now we have in our secrets, for better or worse. Maybe that. Okay, but with that, for example, so how, like, if that would need to be rotated, like, what would, if if it's sourced from the cert, like, how would you, I don't know, how would you get like a? And that's the same problem as the site thread, which we have not. I don't think we reached a solution in uh, this meeting. There is there is no solution to that. You yeah. just can do it safely. Like, it's just a thing. Like you, you could do a lot worse than copy pasting a root certificate into a config map manually and building your 
using trust to build your trust store from that manual copy pasted thing. And that is probably getting towards the best practice for doing this. I'm now remembering a previous job where our trust store was just pen files in Git with a comment saying when they were added, by who and why. And then occasionally we'd review that file and go, oh, we should probably get rid of that root now and then remove it. <laughs> Uh, that sounds about right. I've uh, I've added a action for myself to go and add a little warning for like for advanced users warning on the website on CA and self signed issuers because I think that's that's a minimal thing that would be easy to do and like stop people shooting themselves in the foot. Um, but yeah, later down the road, I'd I'd love to have a more full featured thing on this. Oh, I'm going to add. Add tutorials for set manager trust to the set manager website. It's super useful, I think. Yeah, and I'd be happy to write tutorials for it because I believe it's a good idea. And I have a half open branch to the add CC, the common CADB uh, supports trust, which I should push up. We did talk about this. It was a, it was a, about coupon time though, so nothing got nothing got finalized. Okay, are you quite close to the top of the hour on my side? So, does anyone have any? Oh, it's a dog. <laughs> I've been thoroughly distracted. The dog is so cute. <laughs> Pet, pet the dog from us over. Aww. Okay. But yeah, the only remaining floating issue is test grid, which I looked at my emails this morning and was sad. So we should probably do that. But maybe it's not worth recording that. Or so if no one has any no one has any more points, I'll be happy to stop the recording now. Um, just that, yeah, we'll probably release Start Manager 1.9 next week. Yes. Um, I'll be, I can't remember what. Yeah, there will be a couple of new English stream annotations that people have been waiting for. Um, There's going to be like a literal subject adding alpha feature that allows to add that for people who use um, LDAP identities or something like that. I'm probably misdefining right now. Yeah. Nice to have new release. Awesome. Okay, so I'll stop recording now.